The mission of the hospital and the department is to ensure that we deliver the highest quality of care for patients with musculoskeletal disorders. The ultimate goal of any encounter that we have with any patient is to ensure the best possible outcome. Every person that I've worked with gives their all and that's what makes the Hospital for Special Surgery is so different than any other place. People go above and beyond every single day. We are a true multidisciplinary team. We consist of OT, PT, speech, respiratory, nutrition, nurse practitioner, the doctor. We truly embody everybody that you could ask for on a team. And it works for us as team members, but it also works for the patients. I'm a professional organist. I've been an organist in New York City for the past 10 years. I had a problem in my right hand of not being able to put the fingers together and later it became very difficult for me to play. I also had significant trouble walking. I had seen numerous neurologists in the past seven years, but never a definite diagnosis. We use a variety of traditional diagnostic studies and we are particular specialists in transcranial magnetic stimulation, as well as an evolving process of using gene sequencing so an all-inclusive imaging, molecular, and physiological approaches are the means by which we formulate a potential diagnosis and achieve a therapeutic plan. When I met Dr. Lang for the first time, I wasn't expecting anything because I didn't want to get all hopes up and ending end. So I was just seeing how everything was developing. Three weeks after the first round of infusions, I felt like a young deer, like being able to jump again. I was even walking faster than my husband. That wasn't possible for many years before this. They can do miracles here, and I was desperate when I came. I actually look forward to coming here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. There are times when we arrive at a therapeutic conclusion that there's no available treatment for a given disorder. Nevertheless, patients look to us to deliver hope and to give them hope, and the only hope we can deliver is through discovery. HSS is a research-based hospital. As a therapist, everything I would like to provide to my patients is evidence-based. Evidence comes from research. I was vibrant, active, skied, played doubles tennis, worked out, I was pretty active. Three years ago, I noticed my left leg weakness, my right hand weakness around that time, and I just thought maybe I was tired. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't do those things anymore. And I got diagnosed with motor neuron disease and subsequent ALS. And honestly, I didn't know anything about it. It was a shock. What do you mean there's no cure? There's no treatment? So when you come to the realization of that, you start searching for real answers. John is the ideal research candidate. This research trial isn't necessarily going to be the thing that cures him, but he understands that research isn't for him solely, that the purpose is to help us figure out things about the disease so that we can make an impact and find answers to help us work towards that treatment. I found out about a couple of trials that Dr. Lang was involved with, and I called and I came over and we talked. Research at all levels helps the individual patient, helps our understanding of the disease, and it helps all people affected with that disorder. And I think that's key in hope. There's that exchange that I'm just not going to leave here with nothing. I'm going to leave here with something. And HSS provided that for me. The whole approach of delivering multiple disciplines of care to an individual patient is based on the fact that not all therapy is pill-based or with an infusion. There are ancillary therapies that are essential for treating the whole patient. We really help patients problem solve and a big part of that is education. And that's why we all collaborate and decide what's best for the patient. My role here as an occupational therapist is I look at the patient's overall function. And that starts with looking at the upper extremity, the arms. We look at range of motion and strength, but then it's where do you take that? How can a patient function? Is the ability to raise their arms and their strength limiting their ability to get dressed, to help bathe themselves, to help feed themselves, to do those everyday activities that we all take for granted, but when they're taken away from you, it's a big challenge. When you're in a situation where like you can't get up and walk around and going from being so independent to doing things that you're not used to, everyday activities become really hard. Well, I was just starting high school and I had done cheerleading the whole year. My friends had just nominated me for cheer captain and I was starting to play in summer with my friends, so I think everyone was really surprised when I got sick. 
started out as a stomach virus, but then it got progressively worse and I started like losing feeling in my legs and my feet and eventually I was in a wheelchair. Being told you're gonna be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life is really scary. Dr. Lang was actually the first doctor to tell me that I could walk again. My choice to come here has been the best decision of my life. It's the reason why I'm able to walk today. We've made tremendous leaps in treating diseases as a group, and we're now entering the age of genetic sequencing, being able to look at gene expression, and being able to further dice out individual responses so that we can tailor individual therapies for the individual genetic makeup of that person. I can't emphasize enough how individual contributions to our programs are so meaningful and to make such an impact on our thought processes, our questions, our answers, and our care. That is really what we're all about, is providing the best care, the state-of-the-art therapy and diagnostic tools, and providing hope through our paths to discovery.